On July the 10th, 2023, a scandalous seizure by the priests of the OCU of the Transfiguration Cathedral of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church took place in Bila Tserkva. Early in the morning at 6 a.m., a group of athletic young people, with the support of special forces, entered the territory and blocked access to parishioners. Moreover, they did not even hide the fact they have nothing to do with orthodoxy. <laughs> Two raiders kept breaking open the side doors to the cathedral for three hours. First with a grinder, then with a sledgehammer and a crowbar. Against the parishioners who tried to break into the territory and stop the seizure, the police used tear gas. The church raid was led by the priest and at the same time the deputy of the Bila Tserkva city council, Mikola Hopainich. This was his second attempt of assault. The first he organized late at night on July the 4th. The same group of athletic young men climbed over the fence and tried to force the doors. However, they were prevented by parishioners and the police, who were still fulfilling the law. On July the 10th, the police were already completely on the side of the bandits. The temple was taken over. It was not just taken over. It was prepared for the spokesperson of the OCU, Yevstrati Zora, whom Dumenko recently appointed bishop of Bila Tserkva. Zora never served in Bila Tserkva. He does not have a flock here. The Ukrainian Orthodox Church, on the contrary, has hundreds of parishioners in the cathedral. Now they have to serve on the street, near the fence of their own church, where they have been praying for 35 years, many for a lifetime. For them, this is a shrine, the loss of which is a tragedy. Let's see how the OCU treats this shrine. Can a priest knock down the doors to a temple with a sledgehammer? Any person associated with orthodoxy will say that this is impossible and will be wrong. Andrei Mesko, the priest of the OCU from the village of Stavishche, turned out to be the main safe cracker. The local clergy, Maxim Matvichuk, Mikhail Krechkovsky and other wards of OCU spokesperson assisted him. It was due to their efforts that the doors of the temple were virtually destroyed. But the main thing is not what you do, but how the media will cover it. Hapainich lets a girl from UOC hater Tiasen into the altar room so that she films everything correctly and creates the picture he needs. And only the indignation of believers and priests of the UOC made him lead the girl out of the sacristy, which is practically part of the altar space. Soon, photos of women appeared on social networks who cleaned the consequences of the break-in in the cathedral. Pay attention to their look. Also, one of the cleaners enters the very sacristy visited earlier by the TSN correspondent. Judging by their overall attitude to the shrine, these females might as well clean the altar. All this already speaks quite clearly how the OCU treats shrines. But the main thing is ahead. A fragment of the service of the organizer of the seizure of the UOC Cathedral, priest and deputy Mikola Hopainich, in now his intercession church of Bila Tserkva on February the 26, 2023, was shown on Facebook. What's going on here? Hopainich comes out to give communion to a three-year-old child. The boy does not want to take communion. Then the priest deputy first offers him a prosphora and a drink. The boy drinks water and throws the plastic glass into the cup. What does Hopainich do? He reaches into the cup, takes out the glass and puts it on the table. The sexton first moved this glass to the side and then poured water into it and gave it to other communicants to drink. Try dipping a glass in wine. What will happen? On its walls there will definitely be streaks and drops that will drain and fall down. Surely, there were such drops on the bottom and walls of this gloss. They fell first on the table, then on the hands of the people who drank from it. It is very likely that drops fell from it onto the floor too. Then this gloss, along with the rest, was placed on a tray to be washed. Incredibly, neither Hopainich nor anyone else in the temple bothered about this at all. 
Please note that the priest of the OCU comes out to administer communion even without a plat and assistance. But how is this possible? After all, when children do not want to take communion, they turn away, fend off the communion spoon, and the risk that they will spill the blood of Christ on the floor is simply enormous. There is nothing higher than the blood and body of Christ. This is the greatest value in the entire universe. Does the OCU know about this? Certainly. The canonical guidelines say that if the shedding of blood happens through negligence, then the priest must weep earnestly. The worst thing is that Hopinich not only was not going to weep, he did not attach any importance to this tragedy altogether. He didn't even approach the situation as extraordinary. What follows from this? Only one thing. Hopinich does not consider the wine and bread in his temple to be the blood and body of Christ. And he is not alone. For example, several years ago, his Herson colleague Serhii Chudinovich yawned, looked bored, and picked his nose standing in front of the holy gifts in his own live broadcast from the church. Be that as it may, the cathedral was taken away from the Bila Tserkva believers. Now Hopinich and Zora are the new owners here. Will they change their attitudes in this temple? Will they realize that it is impossible to take away the people's shrines by force? It is impossible to lie and manipulate. Will they understand that it is unacceptable to treat the holy gifts as ordinary bread and wine? Or do they still feel that in their temples this is just ordinary bread and wine?